Hello, my beautiful co-creator souls of love and light. So lovely to be on here with you just now. I felt called to do an impromptu last moment live, as I usually do. Uh, very rarely do I say I'm going to be live on such and such time or day. Um, but I realized what today was, and I realized what's coming for us um, in the month of December as well. So wanted to share some things uh, in that realm with all of you. So uh, first is the fact that today is in another 11, 11, 11. Okay. And um, so it is actually 11, 29 in numerology equals 11 and 2019 equals 11. Okay. So um, 2019 um, sorry, 2019 equals 12. <laughs> oh, I get that right. 2019 equals 12. So it's 11, 11, 12. Um, and this is very significant because of what's coming in the month of December. Um, we have some 12, 12, 12 or 333 3, 3 portals coming. So this is the beginning of those energies. Now, as you can um, or know, for those of you who are in the know, uh, these portals are happening uh, and occurring all the time in every moment because everything is just the own the one moment the infinite moment the infinite consciousness the collapsing of everything into one into unity that said though from an earthly perspective we understand that there are certain dates in the earthly calendar that inactivate these energies a bit stronger it's an encapsulation of it. It's an amalgamation. It is a merging point, if you will. So, um, uh, hello, Anam um, Da. Sorry, it's really hard if I'm I'm squinting. I can see your name. I don't. I have my reading glasses on. But um, lovely to see you on here, and all the others who have joined, Iona and Brenda, and loads of other people who are coming on, which is fantastic. So this being a 11-11 or 11-11-12 portal, um, this goes along with the 11-11 or two energies, the two becoming one. Uh, this is twin soul energy. This is um, union consciousness, if you will, into the one. And then also the 12 of uh, this year, 2019, as uh, some of you may remember really early on at the beginning of this year I did a video on um, what this year was from a soul perspective and is uh, still because we're currently in it um, and it's the um, the year of choice okay so in this realm we have some powerful energies that we're sitting with in here and i also wanted to address something that has gone um, pretty viral i guess across social media recently and i was free from hearing the term ever to be fair um, until i stumbled upon a video of a friend of mine who is uh, like myself well known in, throughout the world um, in the spiritual community for the work that he does and he addressed it from a different perspective. So I'm going to share something from a different perspective as well. Um, hello, Tessa. Lovely to see you on here. Um, so, and this has to do with something called No November. And um, I teach Tantra. And those of you who have been with me for um, a long time, long while, those of you who have only been with me for a wee while, maybe you're free from uh, kenning or knowing this, um, I teach Tantra, I teach, have uh, taught Tantra for many, many years. Um, and uh, I was free from hearing this term. So it has loads to do with something that I'm, um, I have been parlaying into my Divine Masculine God or Divine Masculine Man course, um, which I do a monthly Divine Masculine Men's Circle uh, once a month as well. But um, for those of you who know what it is, it has to do with abstaining from masturbation and particularly having to do with porn. Now, my twin soul dealt with this because he had a porn addiction um, long before he and I connected physically. I've known uh, many people that I've worked with, um, both men and women, to be fair, who have had uh, porn addictions or sex addictions or things of that nature. So I wanted to kind of address this from the soul perspective. 
to give a bit of a different um, feel for it from the soul perspective rather than what's being out there on social media. And uh, Joe, hi Joe, oh my gosh, it's been a long time since I've seen you. Blessed, lovely, lovely that you're on here, beautiful. So abstaining from ejaculation is something that is so, so, so very important in um, the realm of divine masculine sexuality. And here's why. One of the main reasons and for those of you who are divine masculine, I'm sure you'll agree with me and understand this. One of the main reasons is that you are giving of your life force. You are giving of your seed. So when you ejaculate, what tends to happen is, is that you end up losing so much of your life force you need to recover. Now, this was something that when I was married to my uh, former husband, it used to bother the shit out of me, um, mind you, because I was a virgin when I got together with him. Um, uh, my original twin soul who was killed um, before he came back as a walk-in and who my twin soul is now, um, he um, and I never consummated our relationship. He was killed before that happened. And so I was a virgin when I got together with my former husband. And so he would often fall asleep after ejaculation or he had issues with premature ejaculation and premature um, um, issues in terms of um, erection and things of that nature. And it wasn't until I started going deeper into the channels with Source that I came to understand, uh, bless you too, soul brother, love you, Joe. Um, it wasn't until I came into the deeper channels of Source um, and understanding what Tantra really means and how beneficial it is for the divine masculine man to be free from ejaculating. So I'm placing this invitation, and this is why I waited actually till the end of the month um, to put this in because no nut November um, I'm free from actually liking the expression to be fair um, however because I feel it emasculates you as the divine masculine um, beautiful gods men that you are and um, however I would encourage you and invite you into being free from doing this all the time unless you are looking to procreate now, at my age, obviously, it would be immaculate conception. That's not happening. Um, so, but uh, for those of you who are um, of childbearing age, it is important that you keep your life force within you. It keeps the quality of your sperm count up, to be fair. Um, and there's also another benefit that some people are free from understanding that when you get older, you seem to understand, which is the fact that of recirculating the energy. Now, this is something I teach in my divine, uh, or sorry, my uh, soul mediumship course, of how to actually recirculate the toroidal field that we are of our own energy, but then that energy expands out infinitely in infinite consciousness. So if you're giving your seed away, and this is also, the analogy is free from just being physical ejaculation. This is about for both divine feminine goddesses and divine masculine um, gods, men. Um, if you are giving your seed away in terms of giving so much energy um, to someone in a place of either neediness or desperation or a place where you feel a, a, a sense of a obsession or an addiction, um, anyone or anything, if it's in, within relationships, um, if you're giving your power away to a job, um, if you're giving a, your power away to a, a situation, any of that nature, it depletes your life force. Now, for the divine masculine man, it is specifically also related to ejaculation. Mm -hmm. And so to actually learn to be able to recirculate that energy through the Buddha belly breath, through certain techniques, um, that I teach in Tantra and the soul mediumship course I teach it in a different level when I teach Tantra I teach it in another way this goes beyond the sexual act which is actually free from an act at all it is the act or is in action right so along with this goes porn so with porn um, it is a it is actually an emasculating of the divine masculine just mu just as much as it's portraying a woman in the sense of um, a sexual object an objectifying means and this is free from who we're being within soul now there's loads of um, other 
reasons for being able to withstand, uh, abstain, I should say, abstain from um, ejaculation. But one of the biggest things is, is that you are to remember, divine masculine gods, men that you are, the divinity within you first. And it is our highest purpose as the divine feminine God does to bring you to source again and again and bring you to your soul. And actually, my partner and I were just uh, chatting about this the other day because he had seen my post um, that I posted about he and I, but then also the Cherokee proverb. And I had to explain to him that there was a second half to that or the beginning half to each of those sides of that proverb um, that was named written in the um, graphic. Um, the lowest form of coming to the divine masculine and divine feminine goddesses is you coming as a sexual object. You coming to the divine masculine and trying to um, sway him from his mission and purpose to um, use sex or um, any means of man uh, some sort of manipulation in your um, uh, goddessness of beauty and what have you to somehow derail his purpose and his connection to source. And the highest purpose for the divine, uh, divine feminine is to bring him to his soul and to source again and again. Right? Um, and that's the place where I resonate. And then the opposite is true for the divine masculine. For the divine masculine, it is to the lowest calling from an earthly perspective. Now, from soul, there is free from being higher or lower because soul, there is just the essence of um, vibrational frequencies in the bandwidth, if you will, of the internet or the bandwidth of a, of a radio dial. Um, but in terms of earthly context, the lowest form of frequency um, in that respect, the lowest form of purpose for the divine masculine is to objectify a woman, to see her as some sort of um, property or possession. Um, to see to see her as some sort of a sexual object. Now, the highest calling that he has is to protect her, so that she's freely able to walk the earth. And it's made that the divine masculine can a, um, per, um, be this sense of um, coming to his own soul. Aye, he can do. He can come to source in his own soul again and again. However, um, and it's made to mean that the divine feminine can a protect herself as well. However, within union, which is what this 1111 portal is today, um, the symbol I often use is this. Um, I'll hold it up a wee bit higher, but it's meant to be placed at the heart, but it's the union. It looks this way. So it's the union, the collapsing of the divine feminine and divine masculine and coming into union, into oneness. And so the, um, the union perspective is that higher calling to where the balance is on both ends. From an earthly perspective, we need one another, nay from a place of neediness, but in the sense that we complement each other, we accommodate each other, and we do so willingly from, from a free choice, which again, 2019 is all about the year of choice, right, from the soul perspective. Um, and then I'll have an energy report uh, for you for what uh, 2020 is going to be um, at the first of the year after Hogmanay or the new year. Um, however, this said, this is where the balance is. And so porn and um, having sex in terms of getting off um, is simply about the fact of objectifying each other rather than collapsing into union and being that oneness, it's two separate beings attempting to relate to one another to get their needs met through manipulation. Okay, that's what sex is. Tantra, on the other hand, is a whole other ballgame and that's way beyond um, the, the essence of the sexual act. The sexual act is actually kind of like the last thing, right? It's about union. It's about union with source and coming from that place of mission and purpose. And so this is the day that we're sitting in right now. So for December, December we have 12-12-12 coming up. Um, and we also have 12-21-12, basically, or 2019 coming up. So 12-12, um, the 12 power energy is a power source of energy for Lumuria. 
because each Lemurian uh, crystal cave had 12, tw 12 symbols in it. 12 is very powerful in our zodiac. Um, 12 is very powerful from the soul essence because it's the energetic number that brings it. It's reduced to numerology then to three. So the 12, it's 12 or three. And again, it's that 333 magic. If you remember early on in this year, in uh, March it was, we had um, several 333 portals. Okay, which was the unity consciousness of melding Father Sky, Mother Earth, right, or the soul perspective of the divine masculine and the soul perspective of the divine feminine into oneness. So that's what that three energy is. And um, if you were free from seeing that video back in March, I would invite you to go look at my videos on that um, here in, uh, on uh, Facebook and or uh, YouTube. But that said, with this energy portal um, being on the 1212 and it being 1212 and then 1221, uh, which is also the winter solstice, which is a very special day um, and evening because it's the, long, it's the shortest day of the year and where we return to the light the light of oneness, the light of one. And, and so for me, um, I will probably be, it's also, I should say, um, it's also the day that um, I will be breaking another fast. Um, I'm going to be walking my partner through a um, three-week fast, a 21-day fast. We begin it on December 1st, which is the Sunday. And um, since he's um, only done fasting bits and bobs here, I'm walking him through one. So I will be fasting along with him. Um, and it's in preparation for tw the 1221 portal. And in the middle of that, basically, or somewhat in the middle of that, approximately in the middle of that, is the 1212 portal. So um, very powerful energies. If any of you feel called to join me in this fasting challenge, um, I do one-to-ones and wa can walk you through the process on that. If you're already fasting and feel at some point to do all 21 days, some of it, part of it, you know, all of it, what have you, um, I'd be honor to have you join us in that respect and um, in its preparation for coming back into the light of the winter solstice there is a seven year cycle now that has it will be completed on 12 21 uh, 2019 uh, which began on 12 21 2012 right another 333 porthole or another 12 12 12 Okay, so very powerful energies, and as you may can, seven is the number of creation. So we're going to be going into the creation of the soul more so now. For those who are in the know, um, some very powerful energies. We also have the new moon and the full moon. If I remember correctly, the, the full moon is uh, around the time um, of the solstice into Christmas time. That four-day window from the solstice into uh, Christmas Day is also powerful energies and the 4, 8 and 12 are very powerful energies for my twin soul and I. So it's going to be a very powerful month of December. So be free from being surprised if you notice um, things accelerating for you. Um, if you are going through the thick of it in something and you have something that you're shifting and um, that you're letting go of, be free from being surprised if the shite hits the fan in that respect and um, it's going to be a good thing maybe while you're going through the process it may not be feeling like it is but it's going to be a good thing because we're going to birth rebirth into coming into the light on 12 21 and when once i break my my fast my own part of the fast um on 12 21 and because the winter solstice is very personal to me in it being special for many reasons one of those reasons is it was actually the day that my middle son was conceived and the other is related with my twin soul um, however, on that day, I will probably be spending um, time alone uh, by myself physically um, and breaking that fast unless something else um, comes to light um, beyond that. However, um, I would invite all of you to come into a purging of a fast. And here's what I want to bring full circle of this for the 12-12 energy and this 11-11-12 portal that we're in today. Related to No Nut November, related to um, porn, related to abstaining from masturbation for the divine masculine, and um, but also in a way for the divine feminine because divine feminine can also become addicted to that high of sex. 
what tends to happen is what's known, and it's become quite popular, I've, I found out um, just recently in um, California and America. Um, something in Silicon Valley, which has really um, made a big impact worldwide, and so I'm bringing this out now as well, uh, is something that's called a dopamine fast. So what happens for the Divine Masculine and slightly for the Divine Feminine when there's orgasm from a physical perspective during um, Tantra or during sex, during Tantra it's a bit different because it's an all over body orgasm which connects you to Source. When it's a physical orgasm for the Divine Feminine or the Divine Masculine, what also happens is a release of dopamine. There's also loads of other things that get released but a release of dopamine. And dopamine is that feel-good chemical we get, uh, which has us addicted to food. It has us addicted to each other. If we are coming from that place of neediness and uh, have to be with you all the time, kind of thing, um, it comes when we're addicted to uh, other behaviors as well. And the sexual act is also one of them. So what tends to happen in this is that we get addicted to those dopamine rush. Just like an addiction to food, in some form or fashion, all of us are addicted to food. Okay, We crave that dopamine high from that cake or that sweetie or even something really good like avocados, which I absolutely love. Um, it can become a dopamine addiction. It can become a dopamine high. It can become a dopamine um, way of gaining that in a, way, a neediness way. So dopamine fasting... I would invite you to do also during this next three weeks or for those of you who are free from physically wanting to fast or who only want to do part of it, choose either part or the whole time of the three weeks of something you're going to dopamine fast on. Now, um, for me, I remember this doing this in terms of Catholicism. And um, being that I was raised Catholic, we had every year on the um, in the spring uh, going towards um, the time of, of Easter, we had Lent, right? What were we going to give up for Lent? So this is along the same lines as that, but it's now called dopamine fasting. And here's why. Because whenever you eat food or you chronically look at your phone or your whatever it is that you're doing repetitively over and over again in some sort of mindless ritual where you're just kind of second nature and it's me necessarily benefiting you. If it's something that's benefiting you, then that's completely different. But there's dopamine receptors in our brain that get hardwired for this addiction so then you feel compelled constantly to do it whether it's feeling compelled to go back to that relationship that's no good for you or go back to that job that you absolutely hate but you know oh I have to make money um, or um, food uh, your favorite cake your favorite sweetie or what have you it may matter the addiction but it also parlays into porn and it also parlays into sex and masturbation as well and something that has happened for the young ones, the wee ones now, um, who are coming into their own in, in being teenage years, and some of them we're seeing even in preteen age, um, who are doing masturbation in this way, both divine masculine and divine feminine, but primarily divine masculine, what tends to happen is, is that there is such a dopamine receptor mm -hmm. embedded in the brain that there cannot help to be anything that um, can stop it and then they're unable to enjoy sex enjoy the um, enjoy the um, the enjoyment of sex because they are so into how they do it from a masturbation perspective that if a woman or a man goes goes to please them they don't feel anything Okay, because it has to be done a certain way. Now, exploring your body is absolutely wonderful, and we need to be more in touch with our bodies. The issue, however, is we become so addicted to that that we can only understand that touch. We can only understand what we do with ourselves rather than being able to explore it with somebody else. So dopamine fasting means if you're on your cell phone and you're stopped at a light and you constantly got to look at your cell phone or you're with your partner and, and you're constantly looking at your cell phone while you're, whilst you're eating, um, stop that. Go on a dopamine fast. Make it your 
business to be free from doing that. And every time you go to reach for that phone or every time you go to reach for that behavior or that thought process, and um, if you're thinking about and caring about what other people think of you, um, any of that nature, stop in that moment and choose something different. Choose something healthy instead. Okay, so if it's a thought process of I'm not good enough, choose instead to find all the ways that you appreciate yourself. If it is reaching for that cake or that sweetie, mm, do you know what? I think I'm going to have a smoothie instead. Okay, you may not be able to go full fast and, and whatnot. Just take it at the level that you can do. Okay, and um, so this is what I wanted to share for you, with you um, because this is what's so important for this portal energy of the 11, 11, 12 today. And then also for the 12, 12, two 12, 12s that we have coming up in the month of December. It's about purging, letting go of what no longer serves you because we are in the winter, coming into the winter months. Um, hibernation going within and taking the time to actually rebirth into the light on 1221. So with that, I just want to say to you, I love and appreciate all of you so much. Um, thank you for all of the amazing comments about my um, current relationship. Um, thank you for being here with me. Um, on the 1212, if you're here locally, I will be doing a special soul mediumship evening. Um, and it's going to be involving psychometry. And um, so I would invite you to come through. Stay tuned for more on that on my website. And just to say that I love you, all of you. And thank you. I appreciate you so much. Um, and may your 111112 and your 121212 portal days be as amazing as you are. And um, go shine that love and light. Love all of you. Espavo.